have two kids, Bear and Ellie. They are six and seven, about to be seven and eight this fall. I'm married to Josh Baldwin, who you guys have seen a lot of. He's easily my favorite person, and if you think he's great, he's just as great as you think. So, um, I just wanted to talk about worshiping in the midst of disappointment and just kind of on disappointment itself. Um, I'm going to do my best not to cry. This message is... the very core of my life the last four years. I don't even know if that made sense, but um, I like to, I think in my family it can become annoying to my kids and my husband when I take every situation, and I've even said to Josh, it's an opportunity, like, (laughs) this is an opportunity, like, the kids are freaking out right now, and this is an opportunity to use self-control or to the kids, like, opportunity to be thankful. Disappointment is an opportunity. Um, I have it down here, disappointment, also known as a chance to learn his nature and trust what he's promised us. Um, I just want to start by saying... Um, First of all, some of you have experienced greater disappointments than the other. I think it has to do with seasons of life, age. I know at 22, I didn't have even a fraction of the disappointments I've walked through at 31. Um, Keyword being walked through. Um, Staying in disappointment is like the plague. It will rob you of, I have some things written down here. When we sit in disappointment, it changes your thought patterns about God and who you believe he is. It creates new patterns and new responses to life. It's a temptation to believe he's not as good as we thought he was. It clouds our vision and we begin to change our prayer or our dream And we shrink the box that we believe he is. Well, first of all, he's not in a box. But we have a view of him like this, whatever, a circular view. And what we begin to do when we're disappointed is we kind of shrink it down. And every time we have an unanswered prayer, it if we are not careful and if we're not grounded in the word, it changes what we believe his nature to be. Um, so yeah, I just want to say it's okay to be disappointed. I mean, if you try to plow through disappointment and you don't recognize your feelings, you're going to create anxiety and depression for sure. It's okay to sit in it and just, the thing with disappointment is, and, and I wouldn't have known this at t- 24, okay, but now at 31, it's been a few years of the kind of disappointment that is so intense, and when you cry and you go to worship, it's like nothing can come out but a groan. It's like what they talk about in the Psalms. like It's like this groan of like, I either I can't believe I'm still here or I can't believe this is happening. God, why did you let this happen? How could you let this happen? But the thing is, we don't know the reason for the season we're in. We don't know why he's allowing this to happen. He does, and he knows what he's trying to give us authority in. How many of you know the areas that you experience the most hardship, let's sum it up into that word, hardship, it's those areas that you're meant to carry authority in. You're meant to break chains and bondages by walking through things with the redemptive, resurrecting power of Jesus Christ. It's your testimony that changes everything around you. A lot of you are going to walk away from here with a testimony that's going to rock your community 
or your family. And the thing is, like, the enemy doesn't want us to have a testimony. He's like, I know what a testimony does. It, ignite ho- it ignites hope in the heart of everyone around you. When you have a victory in Christ, I don't know if you guys heard me say this yesterday. I might botch it today, but I said something like, um, the oppression that the enemy is trying to put you under is nothing compared to the victory and the blood that you have flowing through the very core of who you are. It feels so heavy, but it's not. It's just a shadow, a mirage. You could just, you could kick right through it with truth. So, Worshiping in the midst of point of disappointment is like, I don't know about you, but it costs a lot for me. It's a sacrifice, and the beauty of it is it's a sacrifice we can give back to him. It's praying, God, I know you're my healer when you haven't been healed. It's declaring who you know him to be in the very fiber of who you are even though you haven't seen it yourself. One of my prayers is, God, you could heal. I have a lot of things I'm contending for healing for, and usually I share my testimony, but I'm actually not really going to do that this time next year. Um, I just felt like this was more important, but I have written down, I read something the other day where I said, like, God, you can heal every single person around me, and I'm still going to be standing, believing that you heal, knowing that you heal, and telling everybody else that you heal. Because if I don't have hope and I don't have faith, I have nothing. If we can't stand on his promises, we're sinking in sand. We're completely sinking. We don't have an identity We're lost, we're orphans, but having that deep-seated conviction of who he is sitting inside of you that you can access at any point in time, that is growth. We can't just be ready to worship when everything's good. There's no growth in that at all. Been there, done that. Oh my gosh, God, you're so good. It's like, well, when I'm having a back spasm on my bed and I can't get up and give my kids breakfast, that's a cost for me to worship. I mean, it's a big one to just be like, I know you're good. I know you're going to walk me through this. I know you have something for me on the other side. It's a discipline And it's true commitment and love and faith. And when you mix faith with hope, you activate something. You give God room to breathe on an area of your life that feels lifeless. I'm going to write or I'm going to give you some a number of a few things here. So again, back to the opportunity fun moment. Um, There is opportunity and disappointment. It is chock full of opportunity. And my personality is. Let's conquer this. Let's do this. Let's. Let's all together make a plan and. Then when my plan doesn't work, I'm really thrown for a loop. But, okay, some opportunities that have changed my life, they're very simple. Strengthen yourself in the word. We need to know faithfulness based on experience and trust in his promises. I think one thing I noticed for me is we can get inspired by things. Like, you can get inspired by what somebody says here today, inspiration will take you somewhere super fast. Like you're on a spring. It's like you jump and there's inspiration, but it's nothing compared to the deep-seated conviction of the word of God. 
that's going to sustain you, that's going to carry you till the end of your time. Don't get caught up in inspiration because it's like caffeine. It, fares, it, it wears off quickly. Take the inspiration. It's good. We need to be inspired. Inspiration actually builds faith. We're like, okay, I can do this. But just don't carry that away by itself. You need to do like you need to get in the word. You need to take that inspiration. You need to, you need to take that inspiration. You need to go to the Bible, and you need to pair up verses that correlate with that because that's going to strengthen you in times of weakness. We need to be ready. We have to be ready. It is the, the, the core of me to be ready for what God's asking me to do. I want to be soft, which means acknowledging. I just told my husband the other day, I was like, man, I was having a hard time. And I was like, it's been really hard for me to admit in this. I was kind of freaking out in this moment. Um, I said, I actually feel scared. It doesn't sound like a big deal to say, but when you're in the middle of it, nobody wants to be weak. But it's only in our weakness that, you guys know it, he's strong. So if I can't say I'm afraid, I'm not letting God be my rescuer. So then I'm running around disconnected from my maker because I can't admit what I'm struggling with. Or like, ooh, being vulnerable, I just, I feel really uncomfortable with that. Well, I just need the Holy Spirit to give me peace. I need to trust people with my vulnerability. Number two, learning to be okay with not understanding. Okay, I'm going to say each one of these, this is the hardest thing for me. This is the hardest thing for me. (laughs) I want to understand why something's happening and how I can finagle it to be what I want. It hasn't gotten me very far. Just give up on that. Just take it from me. Doesn't work. Bill says, you know, we say a lot of Bill quotes, and let me tell you why. We have an idea. It fits with a Bill quote, and I'm like, why would I try to rearrange the words and make it my own? I'm just going to say what he said because he said it much better. Um, He says, if you want the peace that surpasses all understanding, you have to give up the right to understand. I literally, I just have to say that every day. It's okay to not understand things. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that bomb there. Number three, learn to take every thought captive. Big one for me as well. Don't leave room in your mind for the accuser. If he can get you to disqualify yourself, you are doing his work for him. Any disqualification you have in your mind about yourself, just know, okay, I am not, this is not what God has to say about me. So I'm not going to entertain it. I'm just going to move on. I'm going to replace it. I don't know if you heard Brandon yesterday, but he talked about replacing thoughts. Just replace it. It says here, yeah, the the accuser will try to sit on the throne of your choices and your thought patterns, but he needs to be dethroned on a regular basis. Memorize promises. Memorize scripture. That's the best way to change your thought patterns. Let him promote you into new authority. I already said this. Um but I'm going to say it again. The areas we struggle with are the areas that we're meant to carry authority in. Are you struggling with depression? You're meant to be a carrier of hope. Are you struggling with anxiety? You're meant to be a carrier of peace. I mean, the list goes on, but he wants to give you those keys, and so often to obtain those keys... We have to go through that ourselves. Just look at it as like, wow, it's not that I'm doing everything wrong, that I'm being attacked right now. It's that the Lord's ready to promote me. 
And so he's allowing me to go through this because what I'm going to gain in this, it's going to be way greater than what it's cost me. And I'm going to carry it with me through my life. Eric said this a few weeks ago. He had a really great message about, I think it was Elijah, but he said, God is not in as much of a hurry to get you out of an emotional mess as you are in order for you to be able to step into who God has called you to be. You have to be able to feel everything. Again, recognizing fear, anxiety, control issues like I can't control this right now who this is freaking me out God's in control it's just replacing the simple things the simple fears and the more you do it the better you'll be at it the easier the victory will be train yourself to have worship as your first response this has been a really big one for me Feeling stress, feeling anxiety, and just being like, I mean, you can find anything to thank the Lord for. And, the, and what I've realized is it can start so simple, like, thank you, Lord, that my kids are healthy right now. Thank you, Lord, that we have money to put groceries in the fridge. Thank you, Lord, that my car is not broken down. Thank you, Lord, that my family my extended family is also healthy, that my parents are doing well, or thank you for your provision last week when I had a flat tire and somebody helped me. I don't know, you could come up with, if you just start thanking him for with things like that, you can change the atmosphere of chaos into an atmosphere of peace. I mean, scripture tells us literally over and over, I'm going to read you a few verses that I'm really liking right now. Ephesians 5.20, sing praises over everything, any excuse for a song to God the Father. 1 Thessalonians 5.16-18, through 18, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13, fave right now. Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, do not be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice. Worship. For you, in a measure, have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one so that you can share in the revelation of his glory and celebrate with greater gladness. He's the lifter of our heads. He's the lifter of oppression. At any point in time, we can access the lifter of oppression. And if it doesn't feel like it, just stay in it. Just stay in it until it breaks. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't break. What do we do with that? Go on a walk. I'm just saying, we all know that every prayer isn't answered how we think. Every atmosphere doesn't shift always, okay? But you're still building something in the kingdom. You're still strengthening your spirit. Even if you're still not feeling great, you're still strengthening your spirit and you're honoring the Lord. And each time is going to be easier. I always say, me and my friend have been friends for 12 years and we get on the phone every few weeks and we each have our own things. You know, that friend that you've been gifted with that just knows you and walks with you through everything. She lives in North Carolina and we call and one of our things is like, well, what was the turnaround? Okay. So you get funky, something's off, either you're discouraged or you're frustrated or whatever, and it's like, well, what's the turnaround? Like, how many days did you sit in that? Or how quickly did you turn to the Lord? Because sometimes that's the way you have to measure growth. It's like, what was the turnaround? Well, I was funky for a month, okay. Well, I was mad at my husband for three days, or I was holding back love and affection from my kid for two days because I was so frustrated and I didn't even realize it. 
But what's the turnaround? How quickly are you turning to the Lord and being like, okay, this is what I'm going through right now. God, I need you. I'm telling you what I'm going through, and I'm asking you for help. Holy Spirit, help me in this moment. That turnaround can happen quicker and quicker, and that is another way to measure growth. Because even when things are discouraging, there has to be there has to be that growth somewhere. You can always find it. It's when we don't see it that we become extremely discouraged. So to help train my mind and my heart towards God, whenever I'm discouraged or doubting him because I don't readily see his hand or I don't see him move how I want him to move, I just worship and I declare who he is. I just call out who he is because that's something that's never going to change. My feelings will change, but who he is will never change. It'll never change. So if anything, just call on what's steadfast and true. And then number six would be trusting him in a brand new way. We have an opportunity to trust him in a brand new way every time we're disappointed or hurt or discouraged. You can kind of lump that all into one. Do we trust that he's got this? Do you trust that he's not late? Can we find him in the valley, not just waiting for him at the end? It's finding him in the valley. Can we say that he's good? without a little bit of a question mark in our heads. First Peter 1, 2 says, You are not forgotten. You have been chosen and destined by Father God. The Holy Spirit has set you apart to be God's holy one, an obedient follower of Jesus Christ who has been gloriously sprinkled with his blood, God's delightful grace and peace cascades over you over and over again. 1 Peter 1, 5. Through our faith, hope, faith, through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy worship, even though lately you have had to put up with grief of many trials. The Bible over and over again shows us worship in disappointment, worship in failure, worship when we're in despair, because it's the key. The Bible says it because it's the key. Okay, I've got to close in five minutes. Okay. I got one more. I mean, come on. Scripture has just been my bread and butter. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. This is actually my favorite for real. I know what it means to lack, and I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I am trained in the secret of overcoming all things whether in fullness or in hunger. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to overcome every difficulty. Every difficulty. There is no difficulty you face that he cannot conquer, that he hasn't already victoriously lifted you out of. No difficulty whatsoever, whether it's health in your body, whether it's mental health, whether it's the condition of your heart, there is no difficulty he has not already victoriously overcome and can give you the strength to pull out of. That verse right there, I'm just going to get it like tattooed on my body. I don't have any tattoos, but I would get that one. So this is something I wrote down recently, and I'm just going to read it because why not? I believe in the God of immediate quick encounter, and I also believe in the God of the seasonal encounter. The God who says, I'm going to walk you through healing 
Because what you'll gain in this season is far greater than what you'll gain in a moment. The gain in the moment is huge. It builds faith. But the gain in the slow, steady trust is something that I know I can't live without. Because it's what he has for me. And what he has for me is always what I need. Your portion right now, what he has for you, he has the answers, and it's always what you need. You don't know what he's building you for. If somebody would have told me six years ago when I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina, that I was going to move to Redding, California and share with you guys at Worship You, I literally wouldn't have believed it. I should have been like, <laughs> so cute. Doubt it. Every time I used to approach a stage, I felt like I was going to pass out. I would have never thought the Lord was going to use me in this way as he has. You don't know what he's building you for. So walk through it with strength and hope and just be like, I can't wait to see what he's doing because my testimony is literally going to change lives around me. He wants to answer your prayer. He can't wait to answer your prayer. After all, that's how he shows who he is, through answer prayer. I'm going to end on this. I'm not, I was going to read it, but I don't have time to read it. But I'm closing with um, Psalm 23. And I just want to say to everybody here, you can still be taking new ground while you're fighting a battle. You can be marching. I'm, you think of like, babe, am I using the right word, Calvary? You can be like, I'm not good at history. You can be like marching, you know, like soldiers would be marching with their guns. You've got the other team and you've got bullets and arrows coming your way. But notice you're still moving forward. You're still gaining new territory. So you can be in the middle of a, a fight or a battle and you're still gaining new territory. You can be dodging arrows and bullets, but don't focus on the arrows and bullets. Don't focus on the enemy. Focus on your shield. Focus on your breastplate of righteousness and your belt of truth. The word will get you through any difficulty. It, it's alive. It's breathing. It's moving. It's going to get you through it. Don't let the enemy distract you with bullets and arrows. You might be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but he sets a table before you to feast in the presence of your enemies. You can be freaking out and it's just like, oh my gosh, I got to look for the table. What's the table? The table is his promises, his words over me. It's prophetic words I've gotten from other people. It's promises from the Lord in the Bible. I'm going to run to that table because it's my sustenance in the valley. And instead of waiting to see him at the end of the valley, I'm going to find him in the valley. Cling to the promises of the Lord, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Don't get weak in the battle. Don't go hungry. Look for his feast. I'm just going to pray over you guys real quick. Um, Lord, I just thank you for everyone in this room. I thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and the lives of every person here. It looks different for everyone, but you have a key for everyone. You have the answers. You have the Holy Spirit breathing and moving in every person in a specific way because you meet our specific needs. I pray for victory in the lives of every person here. I pray for new eyes, new vision, new hope, new clarity that would pull them out of a season or into another. I speak hope and redemption over every single person in this room. And I thank you, Father, for what they've gained here and what they're going to walk away with. And I seal that, that they may take it with them and not lose hope. In Jesus' name, amen.